Welcome to Learn Swift Quick, Lecture 1, Constants and Variables. So what is a constant and what is a variable? Well, constants and variables both are like containers that hold data types that introduce Swift to that data type. With all programming languages, be it object-oriented or event-driven, you have to declare all of the variables for the program to know what you're talking about. And you have to declare the constants and variables before you use them, okay? Now you declare constants with the let, L-E-T, keyword, and you declare variables with var, the V-A-R keyword. The difference between the two is that a constant, once it is assigned a data type, that it cannot be changed. Whereas a variable can be changed anywhere else in the code. And I will show you an example of that a little bit later. So now that we have defined constants and variables, let's go ahead and open up Xcode and we're going to jump into our playground to show some examples of constants and variables. And if you haven't already downloaded Xcode, just go to your app store. Okay. Bring this down here. Go to the search bar, type in Xcode. And you'll see it as the first one there on the list. Go ahead and download that. Pause this lecture. And when you're done loading it and downloading it, downloading it and loading it, then go ahead and unpause uh, the lesson to continue. Okay? Now, for the rest of us that have already have Xcode on our uh, MacBook Air or MacBook Pro or iMac, let's go ahead and open it up. We're going to jump right in because time is very limited. And we're going to go to get started with the playground right here. Okay. Uh, before I hit that, I'd like to let you know that we're going to have 30 lectures in this course. Okay, and they're going to be broken into thirds. The first third of the course will be nine beginner level fundamentals of SWIFT. With the 10th lecture being an actual application being built. So we'll do nine of these. We're going to go to the playground. And the playground is where you go to practice syntax in Xcode. Okay? Sharpen your skills. When we are ready for lecture 10, we're going to go ahead and create an Xcode project, an actual app that uses what we learn or what you learned in the last nine lectures, which is to say, after the end of each level, so nine lessons and the beginner level, then an app project. So we'll do nine of these. Then we'll actually create an app here that correlates 
with the preceding lectures that we learned. Then we'll be at the intermediate level and we'll learn nine more lectures, nine more swift lectures, and then we'll have an actual project or app to implement at the end of those 20. Then we'll be at the advanced level and we'll do nine more advanced lectures. And at the end of that, we'll have what I'm gonna call a capstone project in which we create an app and actually submit it to the app store. Okay, so as of right now, let's go ahead and jump into Playground. And I'm going to call this LSQ for Learn Swift Quick, uh, Beginner Lesson 1. I'm going to go ahead and let that sit on my desktop. Click, click Create. I'm going to expand this window out here. And this lesson is about constants and variables. Welcome to the playground. The playground, if you think of a basketball player, and I have to, I have no choice but to think of um, the reason they call it playground, is because this is where you sharpen your skills. You know, Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, I'm pretty sure they played on the playground to sharpen their skills before they gotten into the NBA. So I'm assuming that that's why they called it playground. However, without digressing from our subject constant and variables and Swift, this is the playground where we're gonna practice all of our source. We're gonna do the majority of our lectures and you're going to learn how to read actual Swift syntax um, because, you know, unless you're some wannabe programmer that's reskinning apps, I know you've, you've heard of that. Um, it's for not. I mean, wouldn't you like to implement your own syntax and uh, get an app in the app store? You know, when you open up an application, whether it might be a Git repository or whatever, uh, where or wherever you found the um, syntax, you want to be able to read that syntax and understand it, not just to reskin it and put your name on it or that's, you know, that's kind of lame, you know, and more than likely it's going to be rejected anyway from the App Store. So uh, I'm here to teach you to read syntax in Swift. Okay, if you're on the beginner level, no problem. I'll teach you the ABCs. That's what we're doing now. So we're at constants and variables. Okay, and like I said, constants and variables have to be declared before they're used. Okay, and you use var to declare a variable and you use let to declare a constant. Now, here's an example by default here in the playground. And let me show you how to declare or to make a proper declaration. We have... And I'm going to start from right to left, and I'm going to explain to you why. We have, this is called the data type, okay? And this is called an assignment operator. And this is called the variable name. And of course, this is the variable keyword, okay? So this is saying, hello, playground is assigned to the variable name str. And so if I were to say print str, it's going to show up in the debugger and the and below. Well, I didn't ask you to do that. That's about inference. I'm going to tell you about that. Swift is an inference language. It always infers and tries to figure out what you're talking about before you even do it. That could be a good thing. Sometimes it can get on your nerves when you know what you're typing. So you see here at the, the output, Hello Playground, and you see in the debugger, 
Hello Playground. I had it print STR, and that's what it did. Okay? Um, so we know what a variable is, and we know what a constant is. And you say, well, what's the difference? I mean, I mean, you said that variables can be changed, but let constants cannot be changed. That's correct. And so you would say, well, I could just use variables and don't use constants. Well, there's type, there's reasons and um that you won't that you need to use the let constant that does not change. And I'll give you an example right now. So let's say that you're creating a login for a bank. Okay. I would use the let constant for the maximum number of logins. That's called the way I'm the way I wrote this is called upper camel case. Okay. So I would say let maximum number of logins equal five. Now that's a constant. So now the maximum number of logins is now an integer in memory that's equivalent to five. You can't change that at all. So if I come down here, I'm going to do a forced error. I'm going to say max, a minute here, maximum number of logins equal 10. Hey, what's that red dot there? Well, I'm willing to bet you it says you can't do that because it's a let constant. Let's click on it and find out. Cannot assign that it is a let constant. So Swift says, you know what? I'll go ahead and change it for you. Just, just change it to change it to a variable. And then you can change it. So if I double click on this, now it's gone. And now the maximum number of logins equals 10. Okay. So we have 10 attempts. That's a variable now. Okay. And that's a good example of showing you how now we don't want it we wouldn't want 10 because obviously we said after five we wanted to do something but that's a good example of showing you when you don't want it changed so ordinarily especially when you're talking about security and login attempts you would keep that as a let that's just an example of showing you when you would use a let constant okay so let's go down here and when I give examples, I I just use the ABCs because it's just easier for me. So if I say I'm going to declare a, a variable named Adam, and I'm going to say that equals a string, then that's a good declaration. Okay. And I'm going to say the next variable is named Bill. And that's a string. Okay. So you can either say that a variable with a variable name and assign it to a data type. Or you can say a variable with a variable name and this is called a type annotation. Okay, 
So colon is a type annotation. And what it's saying is of type. So the variable bill is of type string. And that's a good declaration as well. Okay? So once you declare your variables or constants, you don't have to uh, re-declare them. You could just use them. They're locked into memory. So now I can say bill equals candies brother so now i'm changing i'm i'm taking can i'm taking this data type this text this data type this string and i'm assigning it to this variable name so as of right now, Bill is Candy's brother. Okay. And if I were to print it, let me say the same thing in the debugger below. Okay. So let's declare a constant this time. Let Dan be of type string. And we're going to let that equal Cindy or I said candy in this one, candy and Bill's brother. So I have a constant with a variable named Dan. And it has a text that is assigned to it, a string text that's assigned to it, that's called Candy and Bill's brother. So far, so good. Everybody's following? Perfect. So if I create another constant, I can say let siblings be of type string. And we're going to let that equal, and I can say Dan is do a quotation mark around here. Dan is pull the data from the variable Dan. That's all I'm asking it to do here. And the end result is Dan in this output window. Dan is Candy and Bill's brother. Okay? If I want to print it below in the, de in the debugger, I will just print it. Print siblings. And you would have it here. Dan is Candy and Bill's brother. Okay? So, if you look over here, you see the ends. These are called line breaks. And I'm going to show you real quickly how to get rid of those. So, I'm going to say print siblings comma 
called the terminate key. And add an empty string at the end, and that should definitely get rid of that line break. That's not terminator. Terminator. My fault. And as you can see, no line break. So, so that covers constants and variables. Our next lesson, lesson two, will be on data types. And we're going to go even deeper with it, variables and constants. I look forward to seeing you there. Practice your variables and constants. And we'll see you in lesson two. You have a great rest of your day. Welcome back to our course, Learn Swift Quick. And this is lecture number two, covering data types. So what is a data type? A data type is simply a type of data or a classification of data. Okay. So your next question might be, well, what classification or type of data is relative or are relative to SWIFT? Well, your first data type is a string. Okay. And a string is simply a text or text character. And it's also the most used data type, not just in Swift, but it is pervasive amongst all programming languages. So let's just jump right in, and I'm going to show you how to declare a proper string. And that would look something like this. So we're going to make a variable called Alex. And we'll say that he is the oldest So now we have a data type called oldest brother that is assigned to the variable name Alex. Okay? Now another way that that could be written is variable Alex, remember what I told you, the colon means of type string equals oldest So these are the two ways that you could write it. Now, I'm getting an error because of this has already been declared up here, the same thing. So if I were to comment this out, that would get rid of the error. OK, so let's declare another variable. Matter of fact, let's make this one a constant. And we'll say 
let bat of type string equals we'll call her the oldest sister so now we have two strings we have Alex who is the oldest brother and we have Beth who is the oldest sister okay so if I were to print Alex and Beth We would have oldest brother and oldest sister. I just concatenated the two strings. Okay. Our next data type is integers. And an integer is a signed or unsigned whole number, okay? And you would write it like this. Okay, so now that we got, let's go catch up there. We have two integers that are inferred. So what do you mean inferred? They're inferred. Swift looks at this data type. And you see the assignment operator going to the variable name. And it says, okay, well, you want this variable name to be an integer. So it automatically allocates the type integer to this data. Okay. Up here, if I if you look up here, even with the string, this is an inference declaration because it says ver str equals lecture two data types. So you read it back to front, data type assigned to variable name. Okay, so Swift infers that this data type is a string to this variable. Understood? So if I make a variable called C,
of type double let's say that equals 10 as well and I make a variable D that's a double and I make that five. So now we have four integers two. I apologize, you have two integers and you have two doubles, okay? 10 and five and 10 and five. So if I wanted to change A, I'm gonna say A equals seven. Now A is no longer 10. Now it is 7. And I can prove that to you. If I, if I were to say print. A. Plus B. We would get 12 because A is 7. Okay. And B is 5. We got 12. If I go down here and say print A minus B, then we have 2 because seven minus five is two. I can go down and go to print A times B. And that would be 35 because seven Times five is thirty five. A divided by divided by B. one because A is seven and B is five. Okay, so those are integers. Um, I could, if I were to make these doubles from the start, so if I were to say A is type double from the start as was B okay then we would get 1.4 you see that Because you would have A, which is 7, divided by B, which is 5. So it would be 7 divided by 5, which would give you 1.4. Okay? I just want to fly through the rest of these because of time.
and the next one we're going to look at is a float and that's written that way and that is a 32-bit decimal and we will declare it something like this Say that's ten point eight ish. Okay. Uh, the next one is a double, which is double of a float. A double of thirty two is sixty four bit decimal. Anytime Swift uses or looks for any type of syntax errors dealing with decimals, it always uses the double. So my advice to use is just to use doubles when you can. Okay, and an example of a double doesn't look much different. what a double looks like. The next data type is a boolean and it is written out like this. And that tells you true or false, yes or no. equals to or not equals to. And an example of that is if I were to say mean is equal to five, as you can see, that's false. If I were to say E is equal to ten point eight, obviously that's a true statement. If I were to say F is not equal to eight. That would also be a true statement. If I were to say F is equal to 30.12, that would also be a true statement. And if I were to say F is equal to 9, of course, that would be a false statement. So that's an example of your Booleans. And the final data type we're going to go over are special characters. So we're going to make a variable called G, which is a type string. And we're going to have that equal So that's a character that is a string. It's a special character. Okay, and if I were to say print G, let me show you the happy face. Okay, 
So that wraps up our lecture on data types. Our next lecture will be on the if, if else, else statement. See you then. Welcome back to Learn Swift Quick. And today's lecture, we're going to cover the if statement. So what is the if statement and how do we use it in Swift? Well, the if statement evaluates one or more conditions and then runs a block of code relative to that condition. And the key words for the if statement is if if else and if else if else and that determines if there's one condition two conditions or more than two conditions so we are going to go through all three. So let's start out with creating a variable called DEFCON and we'll set that to five and we'll say if DEFCON equals five open brace, close brace, print, DEFCON is level five. So we created a variable called DEFCON. The data type is inferred as an in integer, okay? So we have five as the data type, we have the assignment operator, and we have the variable name DEFCON, okay? And so we told Swift to check a condition. If DEFCON is five, then print DEFCON is level five, in which it is, okay? If I were to change this to four, it wouldn't print anything. So let's add another condition, okay? And so when there's two conditions, we use if else. So I'll come down here and put else. Open brace, close brace print defcon is not level 5 so because i had changed it to 4 now it's saying that defcon is not level 5 you see that? So we went through one condition, then we went through two conditions. Okay, and the third condition is if, else, if, else. So I'll change this to else, if. Okay. Else, if, def, con. equals three, then we'll just say DEFCON is level three. Then we'll create an else statement down here, else. Open brace, close brace.
print. So what do we want it to print? So if DEFCON is five, we'll print DEFCON is level five. Else if DEFCON is three, we'll print DEFCON is level three. Else print DEFCON is not level three or five. Okay. So because the DEF CON level is at four here, it's going to print DEF CON is not level three or five. It checks the first condition, level five, and it sees that mm, four. Okay, that's not it. Let's go to the next condition. Is it three? No. Let's go to the next condition. DEF CON is not level three or five. So that's why you got that answer. So if I wanted to make it true to the first condition, I would make that five, and it would print DEF CON is at level five. If I wanted to make the second condition true, I could change this to three. DEF CON is at level three. Okay, so now if I wanted to make this a more functional um, defense readiness condition system, I would simply put, okay, ver DEFCON right now is at three. So we'll leave that for right now. And say if DEFCON is equal to three, we'll go to the middle. We'll say DEFCON is at level three, caution. Okay, else if DEFCON is greater than level three, which is four or five, we'll print, no, not, not, not much less than, hold on. So if DEFCON is greater than three, we'll print, which is four or five, we'll print DEFCON, uh, we'll put, We are safe. Okay. And if it's not, if it's not three, and if it's greater than three, which is four or five, then what's remaining is one or two. So we'll say and one or two, def column one or two, of course, we are in trouble. Okay, so right now the, the DEF CON level is at three. DEF CON is level three. Caution. If I go to down to level five, we're, we are safe. Four, we're safe. Three, Caution, DEFCON 2, we're in trouble, DEFCON 1, we are in trouble. So we went through all three conditions, and that's how you use an if statement. So our next lesson or lecture will be Lesson four, using the switch statement. See you there. Welcome back to lesson four of Learn Swift Quick. And in this lesson, we are going to learn about the switch statement. So what is a switch statement and how is it used in Swift? Well, a Swift statement executes code from values of a controlled expression 
that is then compared to parameters for each case. And a less technical jargon definition for beginners will be that it's just like the preceding lesson of an if statement with the exception that it could take two or more parameters and assign it to one block of code. Okay? And we are going to use, in fact, the same variable from our last preceding lesson. I'll use DEF CON. And I'll make that five. And we'll create a switch. And we'll call the switch DEF CON. And the first case we will print def con one okay. Case two, we print DEF CON two, case three, we'll print. Def con three and we will just close the switch and print Def con four. Okay. So now we have a case for each DEF CON. I left out five because that would be an overkill for what we're trying to teach here. Um, so we have our data type, which is an integer called five, and it's assigned to the variable DEF CON. We've created a switch. But X, which executes the code print def con one given the value of the variable. Okay, so right now it's five. So none of the, none of these are if it's not one, it's not two, it's not three. So if it's not the three, it's gonna go to the default, which is four. Okay. So if I were to change this to one. And it would use that particular case, two. And it would just move on down the line. I purposely put six there because if it's not any of these, then it goes to the default, which is four. So that's how that is used. So now I'm going to make another switch statement. Say switch. Call it def con again. And we're going to say case one, two, 
and 3, we're going to print we are at a dangerous level. Else it goes to the default. We'll say print. We are safe. So because I have it at six, it goes to the default. And it's printing we are safe. Same with five. Four. Still safe. Because I took these three parameters and I was able to assign it to one method. Okay, to one block of code. So, of course, if I said three, we would be at the dangerous level there. If I said two, we'd be at the dangerous level. If I said one, still at the dangerous level. So, there's your example of a switch statement using the case syntax again it allows you to do like the if statement with the exception you can group more than one parameter to one block of code which cuts down on using if else if else statements over and over again okay so that concludes this lesson in our next lecture will be on the for in loop. See you then. Welcome to lesson five of Learn Swift Quick. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about the for in loop. So what is the for in loop and how do we use it in Swift? Well, as you can see that I have for you here, okay, the for in loop basically iterates over a sequence. For example, iteration over items in an array or iterating over a string of characters like in a dictionary or iterating over a range of numbers. And I'm going to show you each example. So let's get started with the iteration over an array. So this is how you would write it out. We'll make a constant called names. And you start an array with open bracket. And you end an array with close bracket, okay? So we're going to put the name Adam. Beth. And Carl in that array. Then we are going to use our for in loop. Okay, and that looks like this. For name 
in names, open brace, close brace, print, names in array are and then we're going to go fetch that constant like so Wrap it here. So, as you can see, it iterated three times names and array Adam, Beth, Carl. Okay. So next, I'm going to show you how to write a for in loop, which iterates over a dictionary to access key value pairs. OK, and it's going to look like this. So we're going to say let number of amps equal open bracket fourteen gauge wire. Fifteen amps, twelve gauge wire, twenty amps. and 10 gauge wire. Is 30 amps. Okay. So then we'll write the four statement and say four. wire size amp rating in this dictionary called number of amps Open brace, close brace, print, backslash, wire size.
goes to backslash amp rating amp breaker. Close, close quotation, close parentheses. And as you see the result here, 12 gauge wire goes to 20 amp breaker, 10 gauge wire goes to 30 amp breaker, and 14 gauge wire goes to 15 amp breaker. And so for our final example, we are going to use the for M loop, for M loop to iterate over a range of numbers. So we're going to say for index in, let's use, let's start at 50, like dot, dot, two, we'll go to 100. Open brace, close brace. And we'll have it print open quotation backslash index. Close parentheses. times, let's say seven, and seven's the lucky number, times seven is backslash index times seven. close parentheses, close quotation, close parentheses. And as you can see, move this up for you. It starts at 50, 50 times seven, 350, 51 times seven, 357, 52, all the way down to 100. And so that's how you would use the for in loop. In our next lecture, we are going to learn about the while loop. Welcome to lesson six of Learn Swift Quick. In today's lecture, we are going to learn about the while loop. So what is the while loop and how is it used? The while loop runs a block or blocks of code until a condition is false. Now, the while loop in my experience is very seldomly used and that could be for a couple of reasons. One, it could be a dangerous loop because it can run indefinitely. And it's usually it's usually the loop that's used in hacking and worms because you can make a, a program run indefinitely, ultimately crashing a system. But the while loop runs until a condition is false. And this is the way that you set it up.
if our i equals one, we say while i is less than or equal to 10, print i. You see how it keeps running? So to stop that, if I were to put i equals i plus 1, then that stops it from running. So the code ran, it looped 10 times. Okay. Then there is the repeat while. If I say print I and I say I equals I plus one. And you say do that while I is less than ten. I. So let's put that bracket in there. So what it did is it actually, because up here, it ran 10 times. Then when I said repeat, it printed it. And a while statement always loops the one time around, no matter the what the condition, true or false. So it looped around because okay, it was at 10, then I hit repeat, okay, and it added 1, okay, which made it 11, then I said I equals, because it, it went by itself the first time around, and that made it 11, then I said I equals I plus 1, and that made it 12. So I said while I, while I is less than 10, print I, okay? So it printed one through 12. So I know you're thinking, well, less than 10, that's nine or something. But again, it was already at 12. So that's why your result is one through 12. So that's going to conclude the while condition and the while statement. Again, it runs until a condition is false. Be careful when you're using the while statement 
you can crash your computer or even somebody's server. So until next lecture, happy coding. We'll see you then. Welcome to lesson seven of our Learn Swift Quick course. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about arrays. An array holds elements of a single type. And this particular type is called an array's element type. This type can be an integer, a string, a class, or a character, but they have to be of the same type within the array. So let's make a constant. Let's make a constant that is assigned to an integer array. So we'll do that first. And we'll say let ages equal open bracket. That's how you start an array. And we'll say 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Close bracket. So now we have a constant with a variable name that is inferred as an integer array. So let's do that again, but this time we're going to make an array that's an inferred string array because these will be the two most data types that you'll be using as a programmer. So we'll say let, make another constant called let, and we'll say streets lived equals, we'll say, Applewood Court. And because it's a string, we have to surround it with quotations, of course. Uh, let's say Oak, Oak, Oak Ridge. And we'll say Walnut Way. So now we have an inferred integer array and we have an inferred string array, okay? So what I wanna do is use some of the preceding lessons to pull information out of these arrays. So let's use a for in loop to pull the information out of the string array. And we'll say for street, in streets lived open brace close brace and we'll print I lived on 
backslash open parentheses street close parentheses close quotation close parentheses and what that does is loop it takes the four and loop it loops three times because that's how many elements we have inside of the string array okay and these are output there in the debugger I lived on Applewood I lived on Oak Ridge I lived on Walnut Way okay so next let's pull some information out the integer array and so since we already used the preceding lesson of four in loops let's use our if statement this time so we'll say if ages dot is empty open brace close brace print I don't know their ages close quotation close parentheses that's one condition so let's put another condition in here let's put two conditions so we'll say else open brace close brace print I know backslash open parentheses ages dot count close parentheses of their ages close quotation close parentheses and so the statement looks and says if ages is empty check this first condition is it empty up here is this empty no it has elements inside of the array so it's not empty so it goes down to the else and it says print I know and it does a count of elements it counts the elements inside of the array ages dot count and there's one two three four five six so it says I know six of their ages if I put another age in there it will say seven if I put another one it says eight okay so we use the for in statement to pull information out the string array and we use the if else statement to pull data from the integer array okay so now let's make another array here. I'm going to say var siblings equal we'll say Adam we'll say Barb. We'll say Candy and we'll say Dan.
So we have another array here. It's a string array with all of the siblings name inside of it. So what happens if the parents have another child? How can we add to that array? You would do it like this. Siblings dot, use the append keyword, open parentheses, we'll say Edward, So now let's print siblings out. Print, print. Siblings. And you see here, move this up. We have Adam, Barb, Candy, Dan, and we added Edward with the append keyword. What if you wanted to add more than one? You would do it this way. Siblings dot append contents of Contents of, let me see, we got A, B, C, D, E for Edward, so we need F, G, so we'll say Frank. to print the siblings I would have Adam Barb Candy Dan Edward Frank and Gary okay now what if I wanted to remove an element from the array. You would do it this way. Siblings dot remove keyword and starting from zero in the array so let's see, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So let's say we wanted to remove Barb from the array. So starting from zero, that would be number one. So I'll put number one. Okay. So then if I put print siblings, She's no longer in the array. And finally, a last way, it recognizes first and last. So if I wanted to remove Gary, let's say, I could say siblings dot remove last. print siblings and you see Gary would be removed
from the array. So that wraps up our lecture on arrays. Our next lecture will be on functions. So happy coding and we'll see you then. Welcome back to lesson eight of our Learn Swift Quick course. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about functions. So functions are self-contained chunks of code that perform a specific task. And usually you'll give a function a name that identifies with what it does. And that name in turn is actually used to call the function to perform its task when needed. So the format of a function, I've already have one here to show you, looks like this. Okay, we're gonna create another one that converts kilometers to miles, okay? We're going to say func, convert, and that's the keyword for function is func, F-U-N-C. Say K-M-T for two miles Say K-M We're going to have the input as a double and we want that to output a double let's say open brace close brace and we'll create a constant that says let miles equal km times 0 0.62 and we're going to return the miles. Okay. So to show that, we'll create a constant called km in miles equals the name of the function. Pull that function right here. So we'll say convert km to miles. And so we want to actually put, that way we can put the value that we want to convert right here. So if we've seen a sign, let's say we're in Canada and we see a sign that says 100 kph, then that would actually be 62 miles per hour that we know of. Okay, let's create another function. Say func, and this time we're going to convert the Canadian dollar to the US dollar. We need that also to be a double. And we need that to return a double. And we'll 
will say let US dollar equals Canadian dollar times zero point seven four one and we need to return the US dollar. So I'll create another constant that says let Canadian dollar to US dollar equals that function I just made. Not the miles, but the dollars. Okay. And we'll say we got a check for at the restaurant that we have to pay for two people. Maybe we got two burgers and some fries, etc. We're expecting like a $20 bill, but instead the bill is $45. Which is, in fact, 33 U.S. dollars. Okay? So if you wanted to leave a tip, you would say, let tip equals that function we just made up here. Convert Canadian dollar to US dollar. It was forty five dollars, and we'll give them a SCO thirty percent tip. Then we'll make another constant that says let total bill equals Canadian to US dollar plus the tip. And that will give us 43.34. If you don't like the way that looks, you can round it off by using the round keyword. Just put those in parentheses and set the round keyword in front of it. And you'll get 43. So finally, uh, we had this function up here that showed the title that we did nothing with. So let's call that and put it in the debugger. And the name of it is lesson title. So we'll go lesson title. And there it is in the debugger. Learn Swift quick lesson eight functions. So that concludes our lesson on functions. And our next lecture will be on classes. See you then. Welcome to lesson nine of Learn Swift Quick. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about classes and subclasses. So as you can see, I have the definition of a class and what it is at the top there, it's made up of object properties that need initialized and also it's made up of methods that implement actions. I've also took the time to create a hierarchy of how a class is actually implemented. So it has properties, objects which come out 
in your project as interface builder outlets, as well as methods, which are in fact functions, preferably called methods when they are inside of a class, which result on the UI level as interface builder actions, as you will see when we are building projects. So let's create a cl uh, parent class now. So we'll create a class called Apple Languages. Let me close this off. It's recognizing as quotes. Create a class called Apple Languages, and we'll first put the properties on there. So we'll create a variable called Objective C. And we'll say that's the first language. Apple then we'll create another variable called Swift which is in fact the newest language Then we'll go ahead and initialize the objects in the class. Using the init keyword. We'll do the base class initializations. And we'll say init. Objective C. String. Swift output string. And we'll say self dot underscore objective C. equals objective C. We'll do the same thing for the Swift. part of it and we'll say function inheritance inheritance and we'll say print Let 
this is what we want the subclass to inherit. So we'll say you have just inherited 500 lines of code from the superclass Apple languages. Okay. I'll put another quote close brace there. Okay, moving on. So we have the method. So let's see here. We got the properties. See the hierarchy. We initiated. We initialized the objects. We did the methods, which is the functions. And we did the inheritance. So now all we have to do is create a child class. Child subclass. And we'll call this class Android Languages. That's the child. of the superclass Apple Languages. Okay? So we'll start with the properties. We'll create a variable called Lua, which correlates with Q Lua. And we'll create a variable called Java, which is assigned to a data type string named Eclipse. Now, we'll do some inheritance. Okay. So I'll create a variable called iOS and that will equal Apple languages and I'll create another variable called Android, and that will equal 
Android languages. And I'm going to say iOS dot inheritance. And as you can see, you have just inherited 500 lines of code from the superclass Apple languages. And we are in the child class. So that's what classes are good for. I mean, you can inherit functions. You can have multiple functions that you don't have to write over and over again, or you don't have to try to copy and paste. Uh, missing a brace and then you have to debug for you know three working days so you just use the inheritance from the super class so that's going to wrap up our lecture on classes and our next lecture will be on optionals so work on your classes and until I see you in the next lecture, happy coding. And welcome to lesson number 10 of our Learn Swift Quick course. And in this lecture, we are going to learn about optionals. So optionals are value types that represent an enumerated Boolean value. And it's either some true value, which is shown as an optional, wrapped which is a wrapped value or it shows no value being false which is shown as nil so let's start out with optional identification And so first, let's do a integer optional. And we'll create a constant called let form int int equals we'll say 50 plus 2 times 75 okay So you'll see the question mark behind the data type. Let me do an example up here. Pretty much data type. With the question mark behind it. Okay. So if we print form. as any int then we'll have an optional 200 
Okay, so we have a wrapped value of 200. And the question mark behind the data type lets Swift know that it's a wrapped value or optional. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the string optional. And we'll create another constant. This time we'll call it form string. Make it a wrapped value or optional. And we'll just use the previous. information here. So remember, this is not an integer anymore now. It's a string. So it's not like you're assigning an integer or integers to a string because you have named it a string right off the top. So you couldn't do anything with these, but print them out, which is why they're printed out here as a result. Whereas up here, it actually uses the order of operations. It does two, set, two times 75, which is 150. Then it does the addition of 50 and you get 200, but it's wrapped. So it's an optional, okay? So now we've done an integer optional, we've done a string optional. Let's go ahead and put print that out. Print form string. as any and of course it prints it out in a debugger so now we're going to do a boolean optional So I'm going to create another constant and say let number a wrapped integer optional dot sum value and we'll give it a value of a hundred. Okay. Then if I say print, number equals nil. So what I'm about to say is, if number has no value, which we know it has a value because we just put 100 in, and we're asking, is that a true statement? And as you can see, that's false because it actually does have a value. Okay. If I create another constant called let no number int optional equal optional dot none print no 
show number. Equals Neil. See, so that's true because here the, in the constant, we have an optional that we said was, we declared it to be none or nil. So the Boolean value, we're saying if it is no number equal to nil, or we're saying no number is equal to nil. And that's a true statement. Same here, where there's a value in this one, we're saying number is equal to nil. It's an empty value. And that's a false statement. Okay. So now we're going to see how do we unwrap an optional. Okay. So I'm going to create a variable called token integer optional I'll use number eight and I'll say print token as any And that gives us an optional eight. Okay. So now we want to force unwrap that and you would do that like this. Print token exclamation point, and that force unwraps the optional eight to just eight. So a forced unwrapped optional must have a value to keep your app from crashing. And so you could do that like this. If token is not nil open brace close brace print token as any. See that? And it has to have a value. So that's one way to guarantee that the app will not crash if it is nil. Because it's saying if it's not nil then run this block of code and it's not nil so it ran the block of code if it was nil then it would not run it okay another way to um 
unwrap safely and optional. is using the if let statement. Okay. Finish this up and I'll go over it with you. So it's saying if let new token equals token, then print new token. Okay, so it's looking for this condition and it's printing out the condition. safely and it's unwrapping it safely without crashing okay so that wraps up our lecture on optionals our final lesson or lecture in this beginner section will be an actual project that gets you out of the playground for a minute. We can do a quick project. And then we'll jump right into our section two intermediate. Okay, so we'll see you in the next lecture. Welcome to our final lesson for section one. And today we're not going to go into the playground. We're gonna actually build a project called Shark Tank, and it's going to be a Shark Tank app that you can use while watching the show. So today we're going to jump right in and instead of hitting get started with the playground, just hit create a new Xcode project. And we're going to leave that as a single view application. Click next. We're going to call it Shark Tank app. Click next. And I'm just going to let that sit on my desktop. And let's see, we'll put my developer information in there. You don't have to worry about that for right now unless you get your developer license, which we'll talk about later. So we're just going to jump straight to the main storyboard here. And we are going to go over here where the objects are. And we're going to type in image for image view. Click on circle there. And we're going to drag that right in. We're going to left click and drag that right there at the top. That'll be fine. I'm going to stretch it out a little so I can cover the whole interface. Horizontally. Okay. Then we are going to need a label. And we'll left click and drag that in there. Okay, then we're going to need two text 
inputs. So that's text field number one. And text field number two. So everything looks uniform. Okay. So I'm going to put that in the center. So we have a UI image view. We have a label. And we have two text fields. Okay, now we need a button. And we are going to Call that evaluate. Okay, so we have our UI pretty much set up now. We have an image view, we have a label, we have a text field, two text fields, and an action button. So next what we want to do, we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on go over here to the assets file, click on that, and we're going to drag the Shark Tank logo in there. Go back to the main storyboard, and you should be able to fetch that image. Okay. So now we want to connect this UI to our source editor. So if you go up here, I'll make some room by closing these off. Now where you see these two circles, just click that. That's the assistant editor there. You can click down there too, that'll even give you more room. Drag that right on in there. Okay. So you go to number 11 where it says class view controller UI view controller make a little room hitting enter and we are going to connect the UI with the source so we're not doing anything with the image view if you wanted to hide or show it then you would put it in as an IV outlet but we're not doing anything with that other than showing the picture. So we don't have to do that one. So we'll go straight to the label. We'll hit control and we'll drag that right on in there. And we'll just call that label and we'll leave it as an outlet and hit connect. Then we'll go to our first input Control, and we'll call that input one. Connect. We'll go here to our second input, hit control, drag that into the code, and we'll call that input two, and connect.
and we'll scroll down and we'll click this evaluate button we'll hit control and drag it down right before the closing brace at the end of the source we're going to change that to an action because it's going to be a method and we'll call that eval for short and it's a UI button and you click connect okay so we want to make sure everything is connected so go highlight the highlight the buttons here you see how it highlights what it's connected to on the UI that's connected that's connected and that's connected so everything is connected so we can they can actually um, talk back and forth with each other the UI and the source okay so now let's add some actual source code so we're going to go to our view did load here actually I want to do something else here just to get it out the way go ahead and we're going to left click somewhere on the outside of this view controller outside of the objects in the view controller in the view controller we're going to click command a that's going to highlight everything we're going to go over here down here to where you see this little triangle and we're going to hit the second reset to suggested constraints so it doesn't look different once we run it then you can left click it out and that resolves that issue now we can go into our source code Okay, so I'm going to go to the view did load, and we want we actually want that label to be hidden once it's once the program loads up, and you do that by saying label dot is hidden equals true. Okay, so now we're going to go down to our, let's see, where touches begin. We don't have a touches begin here, so we have to make one. So we'll go after the, the memory. That's closed. Make some room here. And let's see, we'll toggle. show hide keyboard after selections and you do that like this you say override create a function using the touches began function and that would the code will be self dot view dot end editing and that would be true and just like that that takes care of the keyboard so now we'll go down to our eval which is our action or method make some room here and the first thing we want to do is create a constant called let number matter number for matter
equals open brace, close brace. We'll say let. And F equal number, no, I'm probably running out of time here, number for matter. And we'll say in F by number style equals dot currency. And if you didn't want the number style, you could go with a decimal and you replace dot currency with dot decimal and you would say NF dot minimum fraction digits. equals zero and n f dot maximum fraction digits equals one and we would return n f Then we want to unhide the label. So we'll say let first value T input one dot text unwrap. Then we'll say let second value. equal int input to dot text unwrap then we'll say if first value is empty Then show enter investment requested else if second value is empty label dot tags equals enter percentage offered Then we'll say else let 
output value equal int first value unwrap divided by second value unwrap times 100 close parentheses label dot text equals number formatter dot string from ns number value output value close parentheses close parentheses so I have an extra brace here capital on the string. Got to clear that out. And we should be all set. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. So I'll click on the first text input. I'll click evaluate, it'll say enter investment. So I'll say $200,000. I'll click evaluate, it'll say enter percentage. I'll say I'm willing to give 5% of the business. Click evaluate and that's a $4 million evaluation. So that concludes this lecture. I hope you enjoyed getting out the playground, but we'll be right back in it for our intermediate section two, learn swift quick. See you there.